Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy. And we're out here on this calm day to do a little antenna testing. I want to compare the performance and beam width between the Immersion RC 8 dBi patch and the VAS 3 turn helical. Now, the gain on the patch is about 8 dB. Gain on the helical is 7.5, so just about the same. So we should see a fairly wide beam width and a pretty impressive range. On the airplane, I have two video transmitters, both 25 milliwatt TBS Greenhorns. 25 milliwatts because, well, I don't want to be flying into the next county to test this out. I want this to happen at, well, relatively close range. But I think you're going to find the range of just 25 milliwatts on these antennas is actually pretty impressive. So I'm going to go take the airplane out and then I'm going to fly around out to the sides, low to the ground, so you can compare the performance of these two antennas. Which is better? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I'll leave that up to you. So, let's get flying. You might have noticed there's a third video system on board the airplane, and that's the reason for the other set of goggles. The other video system is a 1 watt 3.3 gigahertz iron horse system from Hobby Wireless. I'm using a completely separate video feed for two reasons. The first reason is so that I can push the vehicle into places where the video will drop out and still be able to fly it safely. The other reason is so that I'm not watching either the video feed so I don't tamper with the data and I can't contaminate it. At this point, the airplane is almost one half mile away, and now we're starting to see the difference between the helical and the patch antenna. As you can see, the patch antenna is just getting a little bit weaker compared to the helical antenna. At three-fourths of a mile, I turn around. There is a roadway, a quite busy roadway out there, and I don't feel safe crossing it, even for the sake of science. So now I'm making my way back. You can see that the patch is doing a little bit better here. Surprising, it didn't do quite this well on the outbound leg, but it's not doing bad. It's still usable, but it's a little weak. Again, we're at only 25 milliwatts, so this is to be expected. However, as we get close to the metal building, you can see the patch struggles with the multipath reflections of the metal building, though admittedly the helical isn't doing a whole lot better. As I make my way back into the open field, you can see that both antennas are doing about the same. That is, until I'm about 90 degrees off center, that is to the sides of the antenna, and the helical just drops out completely where the patch is still usable, if not actually quite good. And now I begin to go behind myself. You can see me searching for a signal as I'm wearing a directional antenna on my face. Behind the antennas, there's a row of trees that I'm also flying behind, which is the reason the signal is completely gone. However, after I exit those trees, I'm making my way out to my left. You can see that I'm now about 90 degrees off center, but this time to the left rather than the right. At this point, you can see the helical is holding a little bit better than the patch, but both are struggling significantly as I'm going out over a row of trees far to the left. At this point, I'm 45 degrees away to the left and about 2,000 feet out. I'm entering my field, and you're going to see the trees off of my left shoulder are the ones you see right in front of you in the camera. As I make my way behind these trees, you can see the helical holds on and the patch has no signal at all. However, when I exit the trees, it's nice and clear. My guess at the reason why the helical has better signal behind the trees is simply because the axial ratio of the helical, that is the rotation capability, is better than the patch. Now I'm near a half mile away again, but this time I'm very, very low to the ground. Both are doing very well, especially considering 25 milliwatts, but the helical again is holding actually significantly stronger. And now I'm making my way again behind the trees, thus the trees are once again going to block this signal. If you look closely, you'll have seen it cross the screen. As you can see, both are struggling as I make my way around the trees and through the little tree hole and around the back side. I'm making one last 
approach behind the antennas that are off to the right hand side of the field. Here I am behind the antennas and the helical is holding a little bit better. However, once I get out to the side, the helical again is getting much weaker than the patch, thus confirming that it is something with the helical out to that one side. I guess the reason for this is likely because of the matching strip on the helical is on that side, and that gives it a very odd side lobe out to that side. So the simulation is actually indeed accurate with the helical. Unfortunately, I don't have any radiation plots for the patch to see if it has any side lobes like the helical, as I don't have the drawings for it. And that concludes our test as I come into land. Overall, I'm really impressed with how well the helical did in this test. Until next time, I might be crazy and keep me flying.